Good evening, everyone. Merry Christmas. We are so thankful to have you here with us this evening, and I hope it's uh, uh, just a powerful and meaningful and moving time for you with you and your family, and, and again, we're happy you're here. <clears throat> Years ago, I used to say, uh, I can't imagine ever moving to Florida because I, I wouldn't want to be anywhere where it's hot on Christmas where I couldn't dream of a white Christmas. Christmas in New York, that's what it feels like. All right, uh, the Parish News has lots of great things going on in the weeks ahead that we'd love to have you be a part of. And uh, the connection card is also included in that. The connection card is your ticket to anything you need from me, from the church office, if you have a prayer uh, concern that you want added to the prayer list or the prayer chain, or if you're visiting with us and would like to be added to our mailing list, please fill out the connection card with the appropriate contact information, and you can place it in the offering plate later on in the service when the offerings are received. Also in the parish news are all the names who have placed these beautiful flowers on the altar in memory or honor of somebody. Thank you to everyone who did that. Uh, the church is beautiful and you are more than welcome after the service this evening. If you want to come up, stand in front or stand behind the altar rail, just be careful with the trees and take pictures. You are more than welcome to do so. Well, we're happy to do it. If you put them on social media, make sure you tag St. Stephen so everyone else can see your your pictures and be jealous. Um, also, if you are planning on taking a poinsettia, we'd ask that you wait till after tomorrow's service, but if you have to take one tonight, don't take it from in here, take it from all those that are out in the lobby. That way I don't have to run around in the morning replacing all the holes that are left when people take a plant from a certain place. Christmas does not end tonight. It actually just begins. So tomorrow we will have an 11 o'clock service. It's different than tonight. It's a Lessons and Carols liturgy service at 11 o'clock. And then next weekend is the first weekend in Christmas. It'll be the, uh, the seventh and the eighth days of Christmas. And it's also New Year's weekend, right? So New Year's Eve, we'll have our six o'clock service on Saturday night. Then New Year's Day, we'll have our nine and 11 o'clock services uh, for New Year's and the first weekend in Christmas. And we are going to extend the Christmas season a little bit this year to January 8th instead of January 6th. Why? If you do not know, we are currently in our 50th year of ministry here in this community, and we are spending the entire year leading up to this October, the culmination of the uh, anniversary year and the actual anniversary date, in celebrating. And we have a very special event on January 8th that will close out the Christmas season. It's called Winter's Grace. It's a special concert that Miss Connie, her music team, and some special guests have been working on for some time now. And uh, we would love to have you there. There are details in the parish news about that. And also, as we think about the 50th anniversary year, we have invited back former pastors and interns and people that grew up in the congregation and became pastors and ministers of various sorts um, to come back and share their story with us. So the next guest pastor is on the weekend of January 14th and 15th, Pastor Ryan Gerlach, who was an intern here about seven years ago and is now the pastor of Spirit of Joy Church in Orlando, will be with us on that weekend. So if you know Pastor Gerlach and you want to share that weekend, we'd love to have you there for that. All right, in the week ahead, the church staff will probably mostly be working from home. I'll be in and out of the office at certain times. You have our cell phone, you have our emails, you know how to get in touch with us if you need anything, and please do not hesitate to do so. So we are blessed that you are here tonight. This is my favorite Christmas Eve service. All the craziness is over, and I get to enjoy this a little bit. It's not so mechanical, and so I'm glad you're here to share it with me, and we really appreciate the fact you've chosen to spend your time with us here this evening. Uh, so let us take a moment of silent prayer, and then we're going to rise and join together in our opening hymn, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Please stand as you are able. Joy! 
Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Trusting the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior, let us confess our sins. God of life, you promise us to expect good news of great joy for all people and call us to be messengers of your peace. Yet we confess that too often we hoard our joy and we fail to look to you with hopeful expectation. We allow broken expectations to get in the way of our trust in you. As a result, we often neglect the needs of our neighbors and ignore the groaning of creation. Have mercy on us. Where we are self-centered, open our hearts. Where we are reluctant, give us courage. Where we are cynical, restore our trust. Renew us with your grace and give us again the hope of eternal life in you. Hear the good news. We are children of God and heirs of God's promises through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Sing with joy for all the ends of the earth shall know the salvation of our God. In Jesus your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and you can expect peace. Amen. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him, strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor, tremble before him all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy to the Lord. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever.
walking in darkness, a new light has dawned. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting hope. For those living in fear and dread, a new light has dawned. Christ, Christ is our light and the source of everlasting peace. For those living in hopelessness and despair, a new light has dawned. Christ, Christ is our light, light and the source of everlasting joy. For those living in loneliness, a new light has dawned. Christ is our light and the source of everlasting love. Now, on Christmas Eve, we light all the candles as we celebrate the birth of Christ. The candles of hope, of peace, of love, and joy all remind us that Christ is our light and the source of eternal hope, everlasting peace, boundless love, and endless joy. Christ candle reminds us that God's perfect gift was sent to us that we might have life abundant and everlasting joy to the world and peace on earth let us worship Christ the newborn King let us pray gracious God this Christmas Eve as we gather together to conclude our Advent journey we celebrate that a new light has dawned a child is born, and that child is our light and the source of our joy. He brings hope into the world and the promise of peace on earth. He is love and heart, love divine. And we thank you, dear Lord, for this, the most perfect gift imaginable. Joy to the world, Christ is born. Please be seated. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy, and they rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest. As people exult when divining plunder, for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulder, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned up as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born to us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with the justice and the righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Second reading is Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and the worldly possessions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope of the manifestation of the glory of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. 
Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. "'Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Stockings were hung by the chimney with care in the hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. It was 200 years ago tonight, in 1822, that Clement Clark Moore first penned those words to arguably the most famous poem in American history, a visit from St. Nick. And he sat down that Christmas Eve 200 years ago and he read it to his children as a gift to them. Clement Clark Moore was the son of an Episcopalian priest who went on himself to become a professor of theology at General Theological Seminary in New York City. And the story about this poem goes as such. There is some debate about this, but the next year, the poem in 1823 was anonymously sent to the Troy Sentinel in New York newspaper, and they printed the poem on New Year's, on Christmas Eve, to the delight of all of their readers. And in subsequent years then, the poem was sent to just about every other major newspaper throughout America, and the popularity and the love of this poem formed the cultures and traditions that center around our celebrations of Christmas in America right up to today. From our hanging sock stockings on the fireplace, to our love of reindeer, to how we see St. Nick, to our leaving cookies and milk out, all find their origins in this poem, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas." Now, Clement Clark Moore was hesitant to reveal himself as the author of the poem. It took him over 20 years to acknowledge the fact that he wrote the poem because he was 
mortified and appalled at the fanfare that surrounded the poem and that it was influencing the culture of celebrating Christmas in America. And you can understand why this might have been a problem for him as the son of a Christian pastor who himself was preparing other people to be pastors and show people Jesus. The last thing that he would want to do is do something that would take the focus off of Jesus on the day of his birthday. Yet that's exactly what happened as a result of this poem. And that's kind of a reminder to us that that's how life goes, doesn't it, sometimes? That all too often in life, our dreams, our plans, our expectations don't go the way we think they're going to go. Christmas is all about expectations. It's about the expectation of a baby being born and coming into the world, right? But it, as a result of that, has all sorts of other expectations connected to it. We have our expectations of what we might get as a gift. We have our expectations of family, family coming together and the memories we're going to make. We have our expectations of other, others, other customs and traditions that we might love to do as part of Christmas. And Christmas, because it's about a baby reminds us that when a baby comes into the world, we have expectations for that new baby, for that new life. We have dreams and those plans. I think back to more than 30 years ago when I was expecting my first child, my first son Harrison, to be born. I had all sorts of expectations of what I would do with my first son Harrison. We were going to play catch together. We were going to go to Yankee games. We were going to do manly things together. And that's when I found out God has a sense of humor. And Harrison is my living, walking object lesson about expectations in life. Don't always have them or tie them to your happiness and to how you move forward. So as you think about your life, you think about maybe your children that have been born, you think about how children grow and they live and they become adults as you grew up. Think about your expectations. How often have you been disappointed when you've had expectations? How often have your expectations not been what you thought they were going to be? Sometimes that's not bad, right? I mean, if all of our expectations as a child came true, we'd be filled here with firemen and baseball players and police officers and doctors, right? But that's not what happens. Life leads us in a different direction. But more often than not... We have expectations in life that are turned upside down by the sin, by the brokenness, by the chaos of the world around us. And that's why Christmas is about how God set Mary and Joseph on that path of expectation that the Savior was going to be born, was going to come into the world through them. Because as God looked at the world looked at a world where all too often our expectations are destroyed and rudely interrupted by the brokenness of sin and the chaos and death of the world around us. God knew we needed to expect a Savior. And that's what the gift of Christmas is all about. In a world of broken and unfilled expectations, we can expect God to come and help us when things go wrong. Up until recently, when we finally gave in to getting an artificial tree because it's easier to set up and easier to take down and clean up, my family had the tradition of going out and cutting down our own Christmas tree. Especially back in New York when we were on Long Island, what we would do is usually on the day after Thanksgiving, we would go out to the eastern end of Long Island, about a half hour drive from where we live. And it's not typical New York there. It's farmlands, it's vineyards, it's Christmas tree farms. So we'd go there, we'd cut down the tree, put it on the car, bring it home, set it up, and start the holiday season. But in Christmas 2000, we changed up the tradition a little bit because for Thanksgiving, we had gone to Connecticut, over two hours away, highway driving, to visit a family member. So instead of breaking our tradition, what we decided to do is that we would find a Christmas tree farm up in Connecticut, cut it down there, and bring it home. So we did that. I put the tree on the top of the car to bring it home and drove at highway speeds. It was a very cold Thanksgiving. And I didn't realize that in doing so, in driving more than two hours at very fast speeds, that it dried out the tree. 
Now, I am a firm, staunch believer that Christmas trees should stay up until the Epiphany on January 6th. The picture above you is the day after Christmas in 2000. <laughs> because every single time by Christmas Day we just walked by the tree, didn't even touch it, you could hear the cascade of needles <laughs> coming down. And that's what was left of the tree after we took it down. Not what we had planned, not what we expected for Christmas or that Christmas tree, but it wasn't all bad. Because out of all the Christmas trees and all the pictures that we have, this, our version of the Charlie Brown Christmas tree, is the most memorable with the best story, isn't it? And that's the beauty of the gift of Christmas and why we celebrate it over and over again. Because it's the reminder to us that even though our expectations are often thrown and tossed astray because of the craziness and the sin and the brokenness and imperfection of this world, God promises, because God is Emmanuel, God with us, that God will work through those broken expectations for our well-being and do what's best and do what's right for us. And it makes sense because there were all sorts of expectations that were around Jesus as he came into the world to be the Messiah, to be the Savior. There were some who expected him to be this great warrior king that was going to lead them into battle and make them a great nation on earth. There were others like Herod who fearfully expected Jesus to take away his power and his throne. And there were still others who expected this Savior to hand out justice through wrath and vengeance. Yet as the life and the ministry of Jesus unfolded from his birth in the manger to his death on the cross of Good Friday to his resurrection on Easter morning, we saw that time and time again through Jesus, God did the unexpected when the world least expected it. And he did it when the world needed it the most. The great gift of Christ and Christmas and the presence of God coming to us is that when our expectations are disappointed, God works through them to help us and bless us. And that gift changed the lives of those people that surrounded Jesus throughout his ministry and we continue to have that gift today. Jesus didn't just come into the manger but Jesus continues to come to us here in the gifts of the church especially the blessings of word and sacrament to let us know that we are not alone. He is Emmanuel God with us working through our disappointed expectations and everything else. It was Christmas Eve in 1818 in this church in Austria. The priest and the assistant priest had set out early that day excited for the day of celebration, looking forward to the beautiful hymns and music of Christmas on their pipe organ and for all the other things that come along with Christmas Eve in church. But when they got to church on that Christmas Eve day, they found that mice had chewed through the bellows that brought the air into the pipes that made the sound for the music, making the organ mute and useless. Christmas Eve was destroyed, so they thought. But the assistant priest, Joseph Moore, had been working on a new Christmas carol that he had been playing with a guitar. So he brought it to the musician of the congregation, Franz Gruber, and he told him about this and said, maybe there's something we can do with this. So Franz Gruber took it to the girls' choir. And that night, with no organ, just with the simple stringing to the guitar, the girls' choir sang this new Christmas carol. The hymn was Silent Night. The most popular Christmas carol that is sung throughout the world at every single church especially to candlelight tonight. Wow. Because of sin and the brokenness of this world, we are going to have the unexpected and the unwelcome happen to us. But because of the gift of Christmas, because we are not alone, the message that the angels spoke to the shepherds is our 
blessed assurance today. Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. Because we have this gift of Christ with us today and always. It's not a past event. It's not a twas. Tis the night. Tis the day. Tis the time. To expect God to do the unexpected when we need it most. And it will be glorious. Merry Christmas. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us raise our voices together, confessing our faith with the Christians throughout history in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to, to come. come. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. Your infinite, infinite love is born to us this night. With choirs of angels, the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of hope that has come to all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. You are pleased to dwell with your creatures and the whole earth sings for joy. 
Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxies and guide us to be the wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. You cherish those who are most vulnerable. Protect infants and children and bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth and attend the dying and relieve any who are in pain. Shelter those who have no home. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help any for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us or known to us who are experiencing distress of body or mind, missing loved ones or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. You welcome those who have died into the joyous light of glory. And we give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with lives of faith and humility. Inspire us by their example to love you by serving others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. Please be seated as we have the opportunity now to give back that which God has given to us by receiving the offerings.
Please rise. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory that, beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Render thanks to you, O God, through your beloved child, Jesus Christ, whom in the last times you sent to us as Savior and Redeemer and angel of your will, who is your inseparable word through whom you made all things and in whom you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven into the virgin's womb. Conceived in the womb, he was made flesh and was manifested as your son, being born of the Holy Spirit in the virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands when he should suffer, that he might release from suffering those who have believed in you. He was betrayed to voluntary suffering that he might destroy death and break the bonds of the devil and tread down hell and shine upon the righteous and manifest the resurrection. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer to you the bread and cup, giving you thanks because you have held us worthy to stand before you and minister to you. And we ask that you would send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, that gathering them into one, you would grant to all who partake the holy things to partake of the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your child, Jesus Christ, through whom be glory and honor to you with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Lord, by your birth, cross, and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. For God has loved us so much that he has given to us his son to be our savior. Therefore, as God's beloved children, we have the courage to pray together. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray, O God, how silently the wondrous gift is given, the gift of your son at Christmas in his mother's lap and the gift of your son now in us as members of his own body. With sins forgiven, grant us a quiet night now and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On this Christmas Eve, the glory of the Lord is all around us. We see his glory in the glow of candles. On that first Christmas, when the angels appeared to the shepherds, the glory 
of the Lord shone all around them. On that first Christmas, when Christ was born, the glory, the glory of, the of the Lord was revealed, was revealed to all the world. We see his glory. In the words of Holy Scripture that illuminate our lives, we see his glory. In the, In the happy, happy faces, faces of those we love, we see his glory. In the quiet beauty of this night, and we see his glory. In the gathering together of people to celebrate and sing about his birth as the angels did so long ago. As the light of these candles illuminate our faces, it symbolizes the light of Christ, a child in the manger at Bethlehem, a savior suffering our death on the cross, and soon to come from his throne on high as judge of all. He is our light here on earth and the eternal light who enlightens heaven where there is no need of candle or sun. Rejoice, for the light of the world has come who transforms us with the brightness of his glory. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of a great joy. That will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David. The Savior who is Christ the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Christ the Savior is born. Go in peace. Proclaim the good news. Thanks be to God.